and welcome back to another edition of the Where Should They Go From Here series, as today we are looking at where the Minnesota Timberwolves should be going from here. And so the Timberwolves, they finished the season at, I haven't been doing this for whatever reason, but they finished the season at, um, where are they at, um, 31 and 51, and they were in a lot of games. So you see right here, they were in the first couple of games that they played. They just couldn't quite do enough to win those games. Yeah, see, look at this. They they weren't losing to they weren't losing like very many in very many blowouts. Very many blowouts. I mean, this was probably the biggest. These two were probably the, like the biggest blowouts. I mean, they did bl get blown out because I mean they're a young team. They tend to do that. But the Timberwolves. They showed, I feel like we saw the potential that this team had offensively in certain games, especially like as the season progressed, this team didn't have as hard of a time putting up 100 points in ball games. And uh, yeah, you see that, you can really see that in the second half, so we'll take a look at actually their team stats real quick. I want to take a look at their team stats, but... Where we at? Um, the Timberwolves were 13th offensively. And defensively, they were like not too good, and uh, that's really, to be quite honest, I'm not sure. That the problem. Okay, I'm not sure what the problem really is, but <sighs> it's just that Carl Anthony Towns. It, I, I don't think it shows the splits as him for the first half and the second half. Maybe it does. I don't know. I don't, I don't think. Well, actually, it kind of kind of does. So, yeah, Carl Anthony Towns, he started off a bit slow in the first couple of months. But in February, up until the end of the season, he was out there balling like he was the best center in the NBA. And there was no dis debate to that. Even though there is, there's no debate. <laughs> there was no debate. He was just balling like and that's where he was. But there's a bit of a problem here. And Tom Thibodeau. So Zach Levine tore his ACL, or I think, yeah, I think it tore his ACL. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. But Zach Levine is going to be a guy. He improved. Shooting wise, he improved a lot. Scoring wise, too. Like, in terms of creating his own shot, he improved a lot this past season. And shooting wise, he improved a lot, too. He averaged 19 points a game. Andrew Wiggins improved shooting wise as well, shooting 35, 36% from three. That's, he just was, he was just looking a lot more confident about shooting from three point range. And, I mean, he's just a guy, he'll be the cornerstone of this Timberwolves franchise and I mean he's just a great basketball player he'll be a great basketball player I, I would say but uh, take a look at his defensive ratings now so far so far I wouldn't call I wouldn't call him a superior lockdown defender yet but Andrew Wiggins, Carl Anthony Towns, and Zach Levine, they're going to have to be the cornerstones. And uh, Chris Dunn, he really disappointed me to start off the season, all right? He's really, I mean, to start off his career. I thought he would be a lot better than this, than what he did in this past season. I mean, we'll still get him. I mean, the problem that I have with Chris Dunn is that he played until his junior year. So I thought he was going to be a beast because he played until his junior year. And he came in and he stunk it up. I mean, maybe it's just a product that the NBA got a little bit fast for him. But he's going to need to step it up. All right. He's going to need to step it up because Ricky Rubio, I am not a Ricky Rubio fan. Although he's a good ball distributor, he is not a very good defender. He's not a very good defender. He relies too much on steals. He gets, he's better at getting steals than he is at guarding somebody like on ball which is not something that you necessarily want with Zach Levine on your team so they're gonna need to 
move Ricky Rubio eventually. I'm not sure if anybody's going to want this contract. So we'll take a look at contracts here. See what happened here. Yeah. So, I mean, Ricky Rubio has two years left on his deal. So they might be able to get out of that contract. And soon they're going to be getting out of the Nikola Pekovic contract, which will be a blessing for them because he's just been injured. He's been injured. And even if he comes back, He's, he just really isn't a guy that they really should have because he can't really do much else except for score inside because his defense isn't very good. Rebounding-wise, he's all right. I had him on my fantasy back here. But, but like, rebounding-wise, he's all right. But he can't really do anything except for score inside. So getting out of the Nikola Pekovic contract is going to help, and they're going to have a ton of cap space. They're going to have to focus on paying Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins first. They're going to have to focus mainly po focus on paying Carl Anthony Towns before Andrew Wiggins, like give him more money, i.e. And uh, they're also going to have to pay Zach Levine. So they're going to need to save their money. They're going to need to save their pennies. And if they can trade Ricky Rubio to a team that is in desperate need for a point guard. In desperate need for somebody that can just be a ball distributor somebody that they don't that a team doesn't really want to, to do anything except for just pass like not even play defense honestly not even play defense like just pass and try and get steal like pick off passings or whatever and they're gonna have to try to trade ricky rubio because that will free up more cap base so that they can extend carl anthony towns and andrew wiggins so that this young core does not break up because that would be something i would just hate to see that i mean gorgie jang is earning some good money so this is yeah i mean this whole cb this whole new salary caps thing where players are getting paid left and right this is just a problem all right this is a problem and this has been a big problem for the timberwolves this will be because dynasties like this it's going to be a lot harder to or i should say teams like this it's going to be a lot harder to keep your players your stars so i mentioned earlier about getting eric bledsoe potentially but uh, i mean i don't know about that entirely now because you really want to keep your money that you have so now here we have mock drafts we have mock drafts and um Right now, it has the Timberwolves selecting to Aaron Fox. I don't buy that, all right? I don't buy that. They should really... Hmm. I don't know, man. I mean, he wouldn't be a bad fit in Minnesota. I'd say... If they're going to take Darren Fox, they're going to need to trade... Ricky Rubio. They're going to need to trade Ricky Rubio because uh, this is really not going to work out. So maybe they can draft the Aaron Fox and he can be... I'm not sure if he'll even fall there, but if they get Dennis Smith, even that wouldn't be so bad because he's pretty athletic and good defender. He's a shooter. I mean, not entirely, but the Aaron Fox will just be the guy that can distribute. He's a little bit more... He's more athletic than Ricky Rubio. He'd be the guy that you really wanted Chris Dunn to be. So, the reason why Chris Dunn hasn't really thrived up to this point, I got a bit of Russell Westbrook, a Russell Westbrook vibe from Chris Dunn when watching him on tape. Oops, and I do that. But so far, I mean, I just feel like his decision making has been the problem because, I mean, you compare his stats to Russell Westbrook's stats when he first came into the league. I mean, this just isn't. This is just not even close, all right? This is not even close. So, yeah, I mean, Chris Dunn is going to have to be, he's going to have to be a lot better next year if he wants to be the guy for the Wolves, the defender, the playmaker that they need. He's going to have to be a lot better because these three guys, Zach Levine, Andrew Wiggins, and Carl Anthony Towns are going to be turning this franchise around. And they're going to need a ball distributor still. So maybe getting a guy like Darren Fox wouldn't be so bad. But they're just going to need to get a point guard and trade Ricky Rubio eventually. And then they'll be getting out of the Nikola Pekovic contract, which will be awesome. It would be awesome. Once they get out of that contract, they should not even think about resigning him. Because, well, they just... 
they, he gets injured too much and uh, or if he retires this season then that would be even better for them but they're just gonna need to save up for their guys they're gonna need to pay their guys because they can't let them break up so anyways that'll do it for this edition of where should they go from here we were taking a look at the Tim minnesota timberwolves and on the next one we will be taking a look at the new york knickerbockers and so that is going to do it for this first edition or this sixth edition of where should they go from here the where should they go from here series and the timberwolves we have just discussed over them so i've been rj west and i am saying so long